This video is brought to you by Anti-Gravity Lithium-Ion Batteries, used by Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, and Monster Energy Kawasaki, and many more teams. And you can use the same battery as Eli Tomac, Jason Anderson, and others. Anti-Gravity Batteries offer more power and capacity than the competitors because they give you a larger lithium battery pack. But additionally, they offer features like the world's first batteries with built-in jump starting that will never leave you stranded. So check them out at antigravitybatteries.com. Hey, what's up? I'm Chris Kiefer, Steve Mathis. Welcome to racerxonline.com and you're looking at the 2023 Yamaha YZ450F. This is the 2.0 presentation. You guys had the 1.0 at the goat farm in Florida, but we're here at the lovely Glen Helen Raceway, 30 mile an hour winds, and we're gonna discuss what this bike is like on West Coast conditions today. All right, so we just wrapped it up. Steve, I brought the big guns in here because obviously it's gonna be a non-biased opinion from Steve today. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to ride this bike out here in West Coast, West Coast conditions because the goat farm had some big jumps, different dirt. Most of us media guys that went weren't familiar with the track or the dirt and some of us were scared to jump some jumps. But obviously we're here at Glen Helen Raceway, which I know a lot about. And I wanted to bring this bike to give you guys some feedback on what it's actually like compared to the 2022. Steve picked up his bike today. So let's start with your opinion, Steve. I know this is gonna be riveting stuff for you guys. <laughs> listen, listen. The 2022 Yamaha won a lot of shootouts. It was a great bike. Yep. And no one could blame Yamaha for rolling out the same bike in 2023 with some minor modifications. That's what a lot of companies would do, but oh no, not Yamaha. This is a drastically different bike. It is. It's a drastically different bike. It really is. It's 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 got some good points, some bad points. But props to Yamaha. Oh, it's got me. bad points. I think it's got a couple of bad points. Oh wow, this is very good news for me to hear actual honesty coming out of Steve's mouth on a Yamaha. Oh, it's still the bike of the year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if you guys want to go back to our 30-minute video we did on Florida, go check that out for all of what's different, what you can use. But real quickly, forks, triple clamp, shock, wheels sprocket chain those can roll over to your 2023 if you have a 22 so you guys can stop emailing me about if this fits or that fits that's what fits on this bike everything else is different oh one more thing steve the muffler so if you have a slip on you want to just stick it on you can do that but just know that there is some r d work in stock mufflers just don't slap on a muffler it takes some time to develop a stock muffler so all right I'm going to give you a couple points real quick, okay. and then you can talk. Yeah. So if you guys watched my video in Florida, I mentioned that the chassis is what feels a lot different to me from a 22. On this bike, the chassis is quicker, similar to a Honda, but not as rigid. It turns really well. So if you're in area two of the corner, especially here at Glen Helen Raceway, it cuts down really well. Like if you have a blown out berm, it'll cut down really early. It feels light, um, especially in the air and in corners. But for me, stability is not quite the same as a 22. And that is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just different. So it is a little bit quicker moving on throttle, but it is more planted once you're in the corner. So it's a give and take, Steve. I agree with everything you said. You can cut out of a berm. If you just move your upper body turn, you can really uh, affect the, the way the bike turns right away. It's very easy. The other bike felt longer and, and wider, let's say. And so the new bike turns better with just a little bit of body language. But yeah, I think you lose some stability with that. I felt like the motor was also, you didn't mention the motor, but to me, it's, it's a two-stroke-ish motor. It's, a, it's, it's really quick through the revs. It's really pipey. It's really like throttle responsy. You can kind of like- Throttle responsy. Throttle responsy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, 
like a two-stroke a little bit where you, you can affect the bike the way the bike moves underneath you with just a blip of the throttle. Yep. So it feels like they lightened the motor up, whether it's a flywheel, whether it's crank, uh, uh, EFI, whatever it is, it feels very pipey yep. compared to the old bike. So I will agree with Steve. It's, it's a freer feeling compared to the 22. If you guys rode a 22, it's um, what I call the heartbeat of a motorcycle is that thumping, right? It has long thumps. This has short thumps where it's really free and you can really come out of a corner and it, it picks up right away. I don't think, like our 22s, you can't quite ride third gear in corners like you can on the 22. I feel like it's not as luggy as a 22. Uh, Thoughts? I would agree with that. I feel like the mid to top is still as strong as the old bike. And yeah, the, the bottom end maybe is a little bit uh, narrower. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. And that goes to being a little bit more pipey. It's coming on right away. Yeah, very responsive and stock form. Obviously, you have a Yamaha power tuner map that you can have infinite changes that, you know, you can't be scared to use these type of things, people. Like, Yamaha puts this in place. You could put all nines on everything and you will not blow up your bike. There's a safeguard built into this power tuner app, but it's fairly, fairly simple for 23. Um, you 22 owners will not have the same features as the 23 owners where you use the slide bar, very easy to use, it adjusts your mapping for you just using the slide. If you want more torque, you want less torque, you want traction control, easy to do with the thumb. Um, I'm going to have a whole tutorial on that power tuner app soon, we'll put that up on Racer X. Best but, app ever. I mean, I will agree with that. It's really good. I mean, there's not another manufacturer out there that gives you this option. Right. There's options from couplers to you can change some ECU tuning, you got to buy another box, but not as simple as putting it on your phone. So I would think other people would follow soon. A couple things too, they cleaned up the bar, they got rid of one uh, button, which is really nice. They, they simplified their kill switch and the map bu bu button and the start launch button, yep. really nice. Front fender, a lot of comments from uh, people about how weird it looks. And the number plate. And the number plate, uh, when you're out on the track though, the front fender, didn't, didn't even notice it, didn't yeah. even didn't even care about it, but it does look a little shorter than in usual past, but it doesn't bother me. I think the air filter system's a little better, uh, gas cap, all of that, the seat comes off easier. So they've refined all the little things on it. And uh, of course for you, the bars are back in the rear hole of the triple clamps. I like the front hole, but uh, on this bike, didn't even- You're all right with it. Yeah, I didn't even think about changing it. Yeah, uh, too bad Travis. You know, Travis, Travis Preston spec put it up in the front hole, but it went back. Ergonomically, the bike is 10 times better. Um, every time I got back on a Yamaha from another bike, especially like a KTM or something, you sit on an orange bike and you feel right at home. You got on a 22 and you feel like you're inside of it and you got ape hangers like you're going to the bar with your homies on a Harley, right? So now you're on top of the bike more. The seat is narrower, which is, for me, I would like to have a little bit more width in the seat, but at least you're on top. Um, everything is flatter, so for me, when I'm sitting to standing, that is a lot friendlier to me out on the track. So obviously minus five down and minus five back on the, on the pegs and the mounts. So that is better, a, a taller, flatter seat. And of course the bar is the same as 22, but the position has changed. So I'm six foot, I appreciate it a lot more. I did a minus five down and minus seven back on my own bike and uh, I tried both of those, minus five and minus five, but I settled on that. That comes stock on this bike right now, so I like that. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's all the above. I think, again, to applaud Yamaha for taking an existing really good bike, and, and, and that's, any, like, that's not just me talking, although I love the Blue Crew guys. If you look at magazines, you look at test riders, great bike, they almost took that. They didn't throw it in the trash, that's a bit too drastic, but they redid it, man. Right. It's a lot different, this bike. Um, it, it's got a lot of different characteristics. I like the characteristics so far. It's only got, you know, I don't know. A day. A day on it, yeah. yeah. But uh, um, I, so far, to me, everything is great. Bad points for me, I don't like the grips. I don't like the grips. These okay. are his bad points, people. Uh, Here suspension we go. is too soft for my weight and speed. Shocking. Okay, so I would, I would put heavier springs on for me, front and rear, and I think that this pad it needs oh, to be oh better. Other than that, it's perfect. Wow, and I thought we were really getting something out of him, but I guess we didn't. So, no. to wrap this up for me, here, here's what I think. If you're a current Yamaha owner and you complain about your cornering on your bike, you will love this bike. If you're looking for more stability from your Yamaha in 22, you're not going to get it on this 23. So stability is overrated. It's fine. Right. So yeah, you don't need yeah. any of that here at Glen Helen Raceway nope. when you're coming down hills at Mach 4. It's great. 
it does move underneath you a little bit. It's a little bit more nervous than 22, but it does corner a lot better. I had to set it up a little bit more than my 22. I had to go to a five millimeter fork height setting, which stock is at seven. And then Yamaha wants to run you a 97 millimeter sag reading. And I tried 102, didn't like it, settled on 99. And that was a happy medium here for Glen Helen. I was getting a little bit of pushing on the front end, which you think, hey, Kiefer, well, why are you raising the rear up? Well, I stiffened the fork up four clicks because it was diving, that helped it. I dropped the fork and then raised the rear and that really balanced the bike out here today. Today is edgy, bumpy, dry, not very friendly to ride and I found a comfortable setting, but I had to search a little bit. Last year, didn't really have to search as much. So it will take a little bit more setup in 23, I feel like with this quicker turning chassis. But for me, you guys want a corner a little bit better and still ride a blue bike. This is a good 23 edition. I feel like it does have more capabilities. And I think for you guys that ride tighter tracks back east, you will like this softer dirt. You will like this bike a lot more. Um, I'll continue to tune it here at Glen Helen. We'll go to some different tracks, but. Don't you feel like uh, Supercross wise, Eli Tomac, Dylan Ferrandez, these guys, this is the better bike? Yes. Yeah, 100%. For sure. right. uh, it's lighter. It's yep. going to corner better. I feel like what we're talking about, cutting down off those berms, those guys can get inside a little bit more. Yep. Um, and I do want to mention, I don't know if you noticed this, but second gear is amazing on this thing. It revs so much farther. And they said in the meeting in Florida that plus 500 is the cutoff. So they mm -hmm. raised it 500 RPM, which you really notice here at Glen Helen. So I can use second gear longer. I complain about third gear not being as luggy, but I can use second gear more. So I have to retrain my brain to kind of ride it like a KTM because I got to use second gear a lot on the KTM. So that is kind of similar to this bike here. That's good to know. All the gears are great. It's fantastic. Uh, also, don't forget, you can uh, easily bolt on a GYTR hydraulic clutch yeah. uh, available at, through the GYTR. If you've seen that setup, it's super clean. I don't know what it retails for, but if you're a hydro, hydro clutch guy, uh, you can put one on and it looks awesome um, and uh, works really well. Yamaha Parts and Accessories Division does have a lot of things for this. You can buy a whole cylinder kit, uh, engine kit. You can get the hydraulic clutch. They have bits and pieces here you can add on to it. But overall, it's a different feeling Yamaha, guys. It's not gonna be the same type of feel that you have on your 22. It's gonna be a little bit quicker, a little bit uh, less forgiving on straightaways, but there are some positives to it and we'll continue to deep dive in that. But according to Steve, it's the bike of the year. It's gonna win all the shootouts, Steve? Absolutely, 100%. Cycle News is out here riding the shootout, so we'll see what, what yep. they think. But, shootout uh, winner still. <laughs> uh, stay tuned for more at racerxonline.com. 12 issues, $30. If you guys want to get a free gift and read the magazine, Steve writes stuff in the magazine. I do. That you don't see online. You'll never find it online. I just finished a feature on uh, the World Supercross and I'm working on the World Vets next. So you'll only read it on the magazine. Stay tuned for more. See you guys later.